Have you ever heard about Jonathan Edwards? You should know him. It is said that he was the greatest theologian America ever had. He lived in Northampton in Massachusetts in the 18th century. So he lived in the time of the British colonies of America. He lived from 1703 to 1758. His parents were Esther Stoddart and Timothy Edwards. When he was a teenager, he studied hard at Yale University, where most pastors got their theological education. He was a smart young man, and at the age of 18 he experienced salvation. As a young Christian, he really wanted to live wholeheartedly for God. At the age of 19, he wrote 70 resolutions how he wanted to behave and live as a Christian. It was very important for Edwards to live for God's glory in all areas of his life. Living for God's glory was his goal of life. Later, as a theologian and preacher, he wrote a lot of books and sermons about God, about his sovereignty, his holiness, his beauty and his glory. He was a God-centered man who loved Jesus and preached the glory of God revealed in Christ to his congregation. After getting married to Sarah Permont, he started pastoring in the church of his grandfather Solomon Stoddard. It was a prominent Presbyterian congregation in Northampton, Massachusetts. His grandfather enjoyed great respect in this colony. Under his guidance and support, the grandson Jonathan had his first experience of serving as a pastor. But after just two years, Edward's grandfather passed away. Jonathan Edwards was immediately appointed as the church's leading pastor. It would not have been easy for him to follow in the footsteps of his famous grandfather, but the congregation soon recognized his gifts as a pastor, especially in preaching the word of God. He was only 26 years old. He pastored that church for 22 years. During his ministry, a revival broke out in his church. Jonathan Edwards was preaching a series of sermons on justification by faith alone, which was so powerfully led by the Holy Spirit and reached many young hearts in the church. Especially during the winter month, almost all residents of Northampton were overcome by a deep concern for their souls. The services were filled with the presence of God and the hunger for the word was visible. Edwards described it as follows. The work of God was visible in the church. Sunday was a delight. The services were lovely. The congregation was lively in worship. Every single one was eager to participate. The whole congregation was often in tears from time to time during the sermon. Some wept out of sadness and inner distress, others out of joy and love, others out of pity and concern for the souls of their neighbors. Our collective public praise became very lively. We served God in singing psalms in the beauty of holiness. This revival lasted until 1736 and many young people were converted to Jesus Christ. The topic of all the conversations in that town was simply the gospel of Jesus Christ. Edwards wrote, All the meetings on other days, for whatever reason the people came together, spoke of the excellence and love of Jesus, of the glory of the plan of salvation, of the wonderful, free, sovereign grace of God, of his wonderful work in the new birth, of the truth and certainty of the great biblical statements. Here we see an important characteristic of revival is that Christ and his word are not only the topic in the church, but in all meetings, at home, in visitations, in conversations, and wherever. That's how it was back then.
Hearts everywhere were full of the gospel. Everywhere the people of the city were discussing about the Bible. Awakened hearts talk about eternal things and do not cling to earthly ideas. Edwards also analyzed the internal events of his congregation. He closely observed the conversion processes of people and wrote the book A Faithful Narrative of the Surprising Work of God in the Conversion of Many Hundred Souls in Northampton. It was published in 1736. It was a motivation for many pastors and churches to pray for an awakening and revival in their places. But whenever the fire of revival is burning, the devil also will come with false fire. Revival times are strong emotional times. Where the word of God was preached, souls were touched. There was crying and sobbing, trembling, groaning, loud cries, physical agony and a lack of physical strength were the hallmarks of these revival gatherings. Pastors and other Christians were divided in their opinions about these different manifestations. Some said that such enthusiasm could not be from God, for such chaos was unworthy and cannot come from God. This view was mostly held by the older generation of pastors. They were called the old light. The young generation of pastors who had a strong influence on this revival, and Edwards was one of them, had a different view and emphasized that the true conversion experience and the true life of faith have also affections and emotions. They were called the new light. In times of revival, God has a powerful effect on people's thoughts and feelings. Theory suddenly comes to life. You experience stirring awe and then also deep comfort and indescribable joy that has to be expressed. Of course, Jonathan Edwards also recognized that some things were artificially made. They were just imitated and that the enemy was also creating false manifestations. Therefore, Edwards found it important to show the true biblical characteristics of a work of the Holy Spirit. Jonathan Edwards wanted to make sure that the true biblical foundations must be laid in times of revival. In 1741, Edwards gave a speech to the graduates of Yale University who were divided into two camps because of these different perspectives of old light and new light. In this speech, Edwards made it clear with reference to 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 how to distinguish between the genuine work of the Spirit and the false manifestations. This speech was later expanded and published as a book entitled The Distinguishing Marks of the Work of the Spirit of God. Edwards later published a more detailed work entitled Religious Effections. It is important for us as well to learn from Jonathan Edwards. He gave five distinguishing marks of the work of the Spirit of God. First, the true work of the Holy Spirit increases appreciation of and love for the incarnate Son of God, Jesus Christ. So this means every God-given revival has Jesus Christ and his word as its central theme. The Spirit of God works by glorifying Christ. Therefore, the unity of Christians is very important in times of revival. Nobody insists on the privileges, group and church denominations anymore. All awakened hearts are united by the Spirit towards Christ. Christ becomes precious to all. The gospel of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ becomes the favorite theme of the awakened Christians. God has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. 
the love for Jesus' redemptive work overflows in times of revival. Christ's atonement, his suffering and death for lost sinners is the main message. So a sure sign that God's Spirit is at work is deep love for Jesus Christ. Second, Edward says, the true work of the Holy Spirit always fights against Satan and opposes the sinful desires of men. What does Jonathan Edwards mean by that? In other words, the life of holiness is taken seriously. The old person is discarded. You no longer want to please Satan, sin and yourself. The fight against the flesh begins. This very struggle is evidence that the Christian wants to live for the glory of God. He gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to be and remain effective in him with his divine power. The awakened person desires to do the will of God in everything. He wants to become more like Christ. Third, the true work of the Holy Spirit leads to Holy Scripture. In a true revival, people get a new respect for the Bible as God's word and truth. They want to live according to the Bible. The Spirit of God always shapes the Christian through the word of God. This is exactly what Jesus emphasized in his prayer. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. John chapter 17 verse 17. Sanctification comes only through the word of God. Therefore, in every season of revival, the Spirit and the Word must be held together. If we only want the Spirit without the Word, we have enthusiasm without a true foundation. If we only want the Word without the Spirit, we get dry. The work of the Spirit places Christ at the center, but also the Word of God combined with the work of the Spirit Next, Jonathan Edwards said, The true work of the Holy Spirit leads people to further knowledge of the truth. We see spiritual growth takes place. Edwards wants to say that true spiritual life is expressed in the desire to learn more from the scriptures and to live according to them. The new birth produces a life with new inclinations. Now you never want to leave the Word. You want to get deeper into the Word. You want to get to know Jesus better. You want to be a student of Scripture. And then fifth, the true work of the Holy Spirit produces love for God and neighbors. In revival times, a new love for God and for fellow Christians and for fellow human beings around us goes hand in hand. Every fellow Christian is valued again. Irrelevant disputes are put aside and unity in Christ is rediscovered and celebrated. Here we see how Jonathan Edwards was teaching clear Bible-based statements about a true revival. We need them today as well. Revival is not about dreams, revelations and much thunder. No, an awakening will give a new love for Jesus a new love for the word, a desire to live a holy life, and to love God and his people more than ever before. Edwards also emphasized that revival is always a sovereign work of the Holy Spirit. Man cannot produce revival. Man cannot hold revival. It comes as the wind of the Spirit, blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit, Jesus said to Nicodemus. Yes, we can pray for revival, but we never can organize it. This was a big mistake of Charles Finney 100 years later. He believed that revival can be made at any time with the right methods. A big error. One time Jonathan Edwards preached one of his famous sermons called Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God. People who listened to this sermon were so much touched 
that they saw themselves on the way to hell. They cried, screamed, and wanted to get saved. The Holy Spirit was working in great ways. Later, Jonathan Edwards became a missionary among the Indians of North America. It is interesting to see that Edwards was so humble and also ready to serve the poor people. Though he was a great theological thinker, he was ready to preach the gospel in a simple style and way to the outcast of society. In the year of 1757, he was called to become the president of Princeton University, in those days known as the College of New Jersey. But then everything went unexpectedly differently. A new vaccination against smallpox was introduced. Many settlers were skeptical about that. But Edwards wanted to promote this vaccination and encouraged people to get vaccinated. He had himself vaccinated twice, but suddenly he died on March 22nd in the year 1758. His wife arrived late in New Jersey, so only one of his daughters was there at the hour of his death. The sadness was great, but the comfort was even greater, because here was a man of God who passed away in complete trust in Christ. He consumed himself in the service for his Lord. He thought a lot about heaven, and preached and wrote about heaven. Edwards longed for heaven. He was ready to go to the heavenly place. Jonathan Edwards, a name we should remember. He was a great pastor, teacher, preacher, theologian and author. His main topic was revival. Whoever wants to know more about the marks of a true revival should read his guidelines. Edwards lived in the word. He loved Christ and God's glory. And a true revival is just like that. It is Christ-centered, word-centered, and God's glory will be felt and experienced. <laughs>